<laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> Sorry about the uh, throat clearing thing going on. Okay, I'm just... <laughs> there was a lot of prep, prep work to do for today, so... Um, so, hi Otto, of course. So happy to see you here. Hi Jacqueline and Vamika and Chantal and Stephen and Gracie and Victor and Stan and Tsukabu. <laughs> Hi everyone. Can you hear me and see me? Oh, here, fine. Yay. Well, see, there's not much to see for now because I'm not exactly under the camera, but yeah. Uh, I have Aaron Dan. I hope everyone is having a great day so far. Uh, we are quite fortunate here to have some decent weather finally because um, yeah th there's still the, the cicadas going on that you might hear because they are really loud but at least the wind is a bit cooler and it's not like 40 degrees hi Patricia hi Ian oh no a terrible weekend why Oh no! Yeah, the minor issues of sink nut drainings are not issues that one should ignore. Um, I can speak from experience because uh, I live uh, under other people and they've been sort of... It happened more than once that someone neglected their sink. And we ended up with a big gold mess. Oh, happy birthday, Gracie! Hi, Lee! Okay, so it's still a bit messy around here. Uh, Alright. I saw that Malvina was here earlier. Hi, Malvina. Okay, I'll try not to roll on my mic uh, cord. Yeah. Okay, so um, on to the topic of today's live stream. Um, <laughs> if you remember, uh, Oh no! Yikes! Damn, that's awful! Oh. Oh no. I hope I hope they, that you can feel better soon. I don't know what there is to do, like if they will give you better meds or something, but that's not great news indeed. <laughs> okay, so um, back to the topic. If you remember not too long ago, um, I did the my, my first video about the Renaissance paints that Melvina had sent me. Um, I also did a review on the liquid watercolors that she had also sent me and I have a couple of things from Renaissance that I still have to test out more and eventually review uh, because there are like um, chalk pastels and it's really not my strong suit so uh, I kind of have to do even more work to get these to work for me because I'm, I'm a bit puzzled by them. So. Um, yeah, Renaissance saw the videos I did, and they were really happy with them, which I thought was pretty awesome, and I think they even wanted to have them on their website as a link that you can check the reviews. And I thought, oh yeah, that's awesome. Well, of course, of course. I mean, I like the paints, so yeah, sure. Uh, and eventually they, they contacted Malvina and they um, asked if she could forward something to me. And since I, I don't speak Polish, that's why... They, they spoke to her but yeah and I recently got the package it's kind of a fun story because it it took like uh, I think I think it was probably by boat but it took like two months to get here but it got here so um, all is good but <laughs> I did not expect the size of the package they sent um, it's it, it won't even fit under the camera so I cannot even show you but it was quite a big box and quite heavy so I was like huh what's in there 
And this is this brings me to the topic of today's um, live stream, in that they sent me. Hold on, I need to grab it, and it's quite heavy. Ah, uh, where did I put it? Oh, right there. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. So I saw this box, and I was like, "Huh." Okay, cool. So I open it up. Uh, I checked everything. Well, I checked most of the things because since the package had been in transit for some time, I wanted to see if everything was fine. So I already opened the boxes and I, I checked like what's in there and just to make sure. But I haven't checked like thoroughly what they sent. Uh, can I increase my volume? Um, not really. Hold on. Just rolling back to the computer. Hum. So I increased the gain a little bit. Is it better? Is it worse? Um, is it too loud now? <laughs> okay. Whew. All right. So back to the box. So I was like, huh? So what's in there? I mean, it's. It's a small box, but it's it's kind of deeper than it is wide. So I was like, huh, okay. Took this out. Took one of these and I was like, oh, it seems to be full full of these boxes. Like literally full of these boxes to the brim. And then I opened the <laughs> I opened one because I was like, huh, what's in there? And I'm like I was like, oh, what? Okay, so, so let me get this straight. I have a box full of boxes full of paint. So let's just take these out, just for the sake of of losing our mind a little bit. I, I, I lost my mind a little bit when I saw this. I wasn't quite sure if I, if I should cry or laugh or sweat even more. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not done yet. Like it's literally a wall <laughs> of boxes. Okay, that that's that's all of them. So um, I counted them. There is like twenty-two boxes. So I I think I am not sure that they all have three tubes in them. But just for quick maths, if they do, that's like sixty-six tubes of paint. Like like sixty. Way too much. 69? <laughs> so I flailed a bit when I saw that. And, and they sent, like, another thing for me to try. But today we'll just talk about the, the watercolors because I think that's that that's more than substantial enough. So, yeah. Um, basically, they sent me the whole range of, <laughs> of Renaissance watercolors in tubes. Which is mind-blowing. Which is, yeah, it, it it did broke it did break me. I was like, I'm still broken a bit, but I was like, w w whoa, <laughs> yay, <laughs> this is so cool. And they also sent um, brushes. Yeah, definitely a lifetime supply. That's just mind blowing. And they sent beautiful brushes that I'm super excited to try. So there is a um, kind of a flat one, size 2, and we have a smaller one, size 0, that's more like a, f uh, a bright, you know, a rounded flat. 
and there is a beautiful small um, squirrel quill. So that's also incredibly exciting. Yeah, I, I, I really lost my marbles when I saw that. So um, today what I propose to do... Uh, hold on, I will... Oh, one awesome thing that was in the package was this catalog. And I gotta say, the picture on it is really nice. Like, that's, that's a pretty picture. But I can check the brushes in there, I think. I'm pretty sure the quill is is um, is a natural quill. Sorry. Um, what code are these? This is okay. So having the catalog is really awesome, but I don't think the tubes are in there. So um, I'm not quite sure. Okay, so this one is yeah, it's petit gripeur, so that's scroll. And it's a size zero, so it's the smallest one. And I also have one that is a mongoose synthetic. Seem a bit stiffer, so perhaps that's more for like acrylics. And ten ninety four. Where is it? Hmm. Perhaps the other one is like a new one, because uh, I've looked at the catalog and I couldn't find the tubes of watercolor in there. Oh, okay, hold on, now I found it. Um, F R. Oh, it's a uh, synthetic. Um, stable. Well, Martin, which is kind of a this rounded shape. It's a filbert. So these are the two brushes. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> I keep saying so and yeah, because I'm, I was, I'm a bit still lost for words. I will, how about this? How about I open all of these boxes and we look at what, what is in there? Trying to catch up on the chat. So I think that through um, looking through at the pans and the boxes, I might have. I think they were like super neatly, um, like in order of the range. Because if you look at a tube, it has um, it's written intense. There's a swatch of the color, and then you have like number, name of the color in many languages. Then it says extra finest artists watercolors honey based vehicle um, arabic gum you have opacity information light fastness staining information the pigments the series same thing but in uh, polish made in poland and it's they are 15 milliliters tubes I've put the link to <laughs> to uh, April's video in the description if if you don't have access to the chat right away. Okay, so okay, um, fifty out of the sev fifty out of seventy of the colors are single pigments. Not many companies can boast. Uh, such a claim, which is pretty awesome. Okay. <laughs> Am I gonna have enough space on my desk for all of these? Do you want me to name the colors? Uh, yeah, I, I am swatching these after. Like, I, I've prepared the charts, which is why I'm a bit late today, because I, 
I have to prepare charts and I have to eat something just a bit. Okay, so um, this is Naples Yellow Deep. We have Naples Yellow Reddish, Titanium Yellow, Green Earth, Hooker's Green, Golden Green, Gold Ochre, Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna, Mars Bordeaux, Mars Brown, Potter's Pink, Lamp Black. And here we have Phthalo Blue, um, Cobalt Blue Pale, and Cobalt Blue Deep. Yikes. Um, brown leather. <clears throat> Am I still in camera? Oh yeah, just barely. Uh, Polish brown. That's interesting. Burnt umber. I am really excited to try these. Like, like incredibly excited. Obviously, you don't need the full range to be able to paint. Uh, I truly wasn't expecting this kind of, of package and I'm, I'm still blown away. But um, it's going to be super interesting to have a, a look at the whole set of colors and hopefully it will help you like decide perhaps which color you might want to order when uh, these become available, possibly on April shop, which is great. So here it's Cadmium Bordeaux. So we have two Bordeaux colors already. That's that's cool. Quinacridone Red and Purple Magenta. Yeah, they they sent me the whole range. <laughs> Which is, and uh, they sent, there was also, uh, well, there is um, another box of uh, acrylic inks and markers that we will probably take a look at in a future video after I've had a bit of time to, like, look into how these work. And then they also sent me chocolate. It looks a bit, um, it, it looks a bit the worst, the worst, the worst for wear because it spends so much time in transit, but I've put it in the fridge for now. And when <laughs> I'm not like scheduled to go anywhere, when I have nothing on my schedule, I will of course give it a try, even if it's a bit old and has perhaps been warm a bit in transit. I think it's really rare to have chocolate that goes bad, so I will be giving it a try anyway, because it, the palette the scent is just gorgeous. It's like chocolate, and it has a um, freeze-dried fruits on it, like. Cranberries, strawberries, and raspberries. And th they sent a thank you, like it was written thank you on the paper. I, I was, I it was, I think I, I didn't cry when I got it just because I was so hot that I was sweating all my water already. But I was really teary eyed and, and like flailing and not, not knowing what to do with myself. Okay, so that was Prussian green, Helio turquoise, mm -hmm. and permanent green. Oh, it's it's so far. I think they they have the price of the the most kind company I've seen so far, with second position being held by M Graham, which are also like insanely kind. Okay, so here we have Cadmium Yellow Deep, uh, Cadmium Orange, and Indian Yellow. Yeah, food and paint in the same box. That's just doesn't get any better than that. Oh, ooh, mm. I kind of like any color that has uh, turquoise in it, and this is cobalt turquoise. So, oh, indigo hue. Well, it's always a hue because the genuine thing is kind of hard to use, but gotta love some indigo and in the throne blue. This was a really winning box. <laughs> oh, 
Ah. Yeah, I think I would love them. They seem to be so nice. There is 70 in the line. <gasps> Yikes, guys, that's a lot. Okay, so raw umber, sepia, and Van Dyke brown. I love the way the, the tubes are presented because the, the fact that you have a, like a swatch of the painted color on it is really indicative of what you're getting. <clears throat> Ooh, perylene violet. Yay. Um, paint is gray, which is uh, kind of a bluish uh, dark color, and mineral gray. Huh. My, oh, I'm still not out of, of frame. Good. Good, good. Well, I, I, they, they, they truly deserve to be proud of the labels because I think I think these are the first labels I see that, you know, you look at the display and you can fully trust, uh, like, your impression. You don't have to look at the tiny uh, squares below the the name of the color. Like, I, you, can, you can look at this and follow your instinct and go, mm, I like this color, I'm getting this one. I like this color, I'm getting this one. Instead of, like like wondering if the swatch is representative of what the color will be so olive green here uh chromium oxide green which i'm super excited about <laughs> and cobalt green deep also very exciting How um, affordable will the paints be, um, April, if you know? Like what kind of pricing they will be when they come out. So we have transparent gold ochre here, which has a kind of a, a nice um, quinacridone gold kind of look. Um, transparent yellow and a real in hue. I'm glad that like for indigo and aurelian so far they went for the use because as pretty as the original pigments are they don't stand the test of light really well how is renaissance pronounced no idea i say renaissance because that's what that's what i read The pricing is going to be really reasonable. I have to figure out. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, of course, we here we have to, to deal with the import fees and all of that, which is completely normal and to be expected. But I mean, it's still a better deal to import something that is less expensive to begin with than something that is more expensive. And so in the end, we still end up with paints that are more affordable than than other paints. Um, permanent carmine. Cadmium red deep and cadmium red medium. Okay. Oh, I am pronouncing correctly. Nice. It's basically like a bit like a Renaissance in French. It's really similar to the French word, so. Oh. Response uh, for me. Huh. Okay, so I have a second real in hue here. Okay. And um, chromium yellow hue and lemon yellow. So I think the, the tube number nine is missing. If there is one, of course. Oh, 52 orange, orange ochre. Oh, I love these colors. Um, burnt sienna and red ochre. Okay, 
the, the, the ultimate burn Sienna test, guys. PBR7 or PR101? PBR7, they win. They win the challenge. They absolutely win the challenge. Ah, yes, the purples, guys, the purples. Manganese violet. Um, dum -dum, mineral violet. So, yeah, Dyax is in violet, basically. And ultramarine violet hue. <coughs> oh, interesting. Oh, there is a tube number nine, cat yellow pale. That's possibly perhaps the only color that is not in there, but we'll see. So I have Helio Cerulean here, and I'm sort of running out. Oh, I have a bit of space at the bottom, at the top, fine. Um, ultramarine blue, kind of a classic. And Prussian blue, another classic. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Sap green, cobalt green pale, and phthalo green. Holy moly, that's a lot of pink. Um, scarlet red. I'm truly like. Cadmium red pale and chromium or uh, chromium orange hue. Oh yes, that's a good one. Okay, and down to the last box, guys. Oh, thank you so much, April. Well, I, w I would have probably ordered one anyway, just because I get like, like it, it will mess with my brain if I have dull range but one color <laughs> like ah no <laughs> where is it so um titanium white permanent Chinese white and Naples yellow pale and I'll just put these here because all right so um literally my whole workspace is full <laughs> uh, so now I'm just going to remove the extra um, Aurelian, just so I don't get mixed up into all of this. Okay, so how do I proceed? I think I'm going to have to use the floor. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to lay down the tubes um, in order on a piece of paper on the floor and I will bring up a few of them at a time. So yeah, that's a bit, um, I I'm pretty sure you can understand by now why I was broken when I got this package. Because it's just, like, who wouldn't be completely thrown off their horse, horse after opening that box? Seriously. If you can keep your composure after that, you're <laughs> a much better actor than I am. I am not. Seems to be a really complete range. I'm really excited to try it out.
<laughs> oh, yesterday it was raining and I had some um, errands to run. I had to go make uh, some prints. To go print some print prints at the printer. <laughs> and it was raining, like you need an umbrella kind of rain. And as I was walking over to the printer, I saw a guy watering the lawn. And I was like, um, what, what are you doing? And it was one of those, uh, you know, like it was kind of a, the, the, the lawn of a school. So I thought perhaps he's mandated like, on this day I have to wet the grass. And he was like, he wasn't doing it really thoroughly. So maybe that's like a saving grace. Oh, I seem not to be missing uh, colors 67, 68, and 69 as well, which is odd. So I wonder if I might have misplaced them, because that's technically one box. Hmm, curious, curious stuff. It's not, <laughs> it's not really a problem in the sense that even with um, 65, 66 odd colors, I have more than enough to paint like a bunch of stuff for a lifetime. But it's just something that I need to keep in mind when I'm going to do the swatches because I'm going to leave some room for the numbers that are not in the selection I have. the boxes are checked I'm um, over here that's good I will just do a quick sweep of the box to make sure I haven't forgotten one in here which could definitely happen I was so overwhelmed when I got this package that maybe my brain wasn't 100% in here Okay, so, yeah. Those are the blacks. Yeah, I agree that it would be hard not, hard not to have them, but I really can't find them. It's really as if one box of three was missing. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, the black ones. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna be running super quickly after these. Um, okay. Oh yeah, my switches. So I, I prepared four sheets of 18 um, swatches, should be more than enough, right? Okay, so that's the first one. I'm gonna need a ballpoint pen. I'm gonna need a sip of chocolate soy milk in the cutest kitty mug ever it says are you kidding me which makes me laugh every time cool that's delicious Alrighty, big eraser. This might make the camera wobble, so if you are uh, bothered by camera moves, just look away for a minute. Just give me the time to erase the pencil lines. This is when the huge eraser is super handy. Um, 
yeah, I, I am really super lucky and thankful. And it's just incredible to me that this happened. All right, that's ready. That's set. It wasn't the, it was the uh, soy milk, but the chocolate flavor soy milk. Oh, I'm so glad they were appreciative of my videos. They're, they, they really... I'm, I'm really appreciative of, of the fact that they appreciate my videos. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, these are all the like small palettes I have. I will be dropping like a, a bit of paint in these and then swatching it on. I have no idea where to put these paints. I kind of want them all in the same palette because I'm, I'm bothered when that's not the case. But um, the one palette I've seen that could fit all these colors, well, I'm not so sure anymore, 70 colors? Maybe not. Yeah, they wouldn't even fit all these colors. But see this huge palette I use for my M. Graham paints has 65 spaces. And that's the largest one I've seen. So with 70 colors, I'm <laughs> not sure I'll manage. Perhaps I'll do it like I did my um, my Daniel Smith colors. But I would prefer not to have the paints and bands. Anyway, for now, we're just gonna see what we can do with this. So the first six colors. Um, hi everyone coming in. Hi Paolo. So here we are. That's the second color. First color, titanium white. Oh, I really need to get something for my fingers because opening all these tubes is going to be painful in the long run. So let's see. Oh, nice. Nice and fresh. Has not separated for one bit. I I'm just worried. I don't want to press out too much paint. So kind of just a dot like that. Of course, I, I don't usually put all the info like uh, opacity, uh, light fastness, staining, all that on the swatches because that's not really super relevant to me, but I will be naming them and putting the pigment info. Titanium white, PW6. Second color, um, wait, I should perhaps paint it first. I will be using good old um, Royal and Magnifold Zen brush. I'm not going to use the brush descent because they're brand new and swatching is just basically a lot of strain on the bristle, which is fine for a synthetic cheap brush like this one, but that's something I want to do with the brand new brush. Oh wow, that's nice. Like, right out of the tube, this white has a nice um, bit gouache-like feel to it. Like liquid gouache, anyway. Just hope that my, my swatch sheet, I've had enough time to dry, so I won't be picking up the black. So, um, even if they say, in general, not, not specifically luminescence, but in general with watercolor, even if they say that something is uh, opaque, you, you should not expect it to be like 100% opaque, you can see through it. The, the, the opacity in watercolor is basically just code to say that if you put it over a line, it's going to obscure or hide the lines a bit. Like, even gouache is not fully opaque, so... Okay, let's see... Permanent... G... 
Chinese. PW4. So far, these are the uh, standard pigments for these colors. Usually, Chinese white is the more transparent white of the two. It's basically what they call a mixing white. Like if you want to stretch out the color and make it much lighter but not dilute it too much, you can use Chinese white. It's also zinc white, I think. You can see that it's definitely more transparent than the other one. I hope I will have enough time to review all the, well, to swatch out all the colors today, but that might not be possible. And if it's not possible, I will just pause the process and I will make a, another live stream as soon as possible with the rest of the colors. This is Naples Yellow Light. I have a bit of a hard time keep uh, not light, sorry, pale. I have a bit of a hard time following up the chat. If you want to, if you have a question and you want to make sure that I see them, uh, write question in caps or at me, like do the um, I, was, I, I just know the name for that symbol in French, but basically write, you know, the, the at sign and start writing my name and it's going to fill in with the rest. So that's PW6 and PY42, so synthetic, uh, one of the iron oxides, and white. Question, what set of this line did you review previously? I reviewed the pans, the watercolor pans. That's nice. Nice, opac nice opacity to this one. Thank you so much, Otto, for the uh, all the info. <laughs> really appreciate it. I will not be washing these uh, pans right away. I will try to use up the paints before I clean these up, of course. That's Naples Yellow Deep. Also, when the when I'm done with the swatches, I will try and see about posting um, good photos of the colors on my Patreon page. Because um, my camera for live streaming is not the best. And I know that it might not represent the colors super accurately. So this is also PW6 and PY42, but it's probably a, a higher ratio of, um, of the yellow pigment than the white pigment. Naples Yellow Reddish. so satisfying to <laughs> look at this range of colors because they 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 work with each other each other so well i'm i'm really fond of monochromatic scenes and art 
So when I see something like this, that it's basically like all colors of beige with small variations, I'm like, hmm, exciting. I like this. Our sixth color is titanium yellow. I wonder if it's like a nickel titanate. We'll see with the pigment number. Yes, EY53. It's a super nice light cold yellow. It's not fully transparent, so that might be an issue for people who prefer to have transparent colors, but it's really super nice. I find it difficult to find cool yellows that are transparent. Like the, the, the most of them at least have some degree of opacity. I wonder if you can hear the music that just <laughs> happened outside. I think I'll be on the lookout for a large enough palette to put all of these in. I'm not sure if I will find anything, but of course I will keep you guys posted. Please make sure everything is nicely screwed shut. Okay. So the next line of colors, I got to remember that one of them is missing. So this square, I got to keep empty. Hello, Tracy. Oh, hmm. Are the Renaissance pans as opaque? It's not a matter of, it's a matter of pigment, truly. Opacity is a matter of pigment more than anything, unless you go for the really, really, really cheap watercolors. Because some pigments are going to be opaque no matter what you do. Like, uh, this one is opaque, PW6 is opaque, so opaque, 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 opaque. Because of the pigment in there. So here is lemon yellow, and it is PY3, a classic. So far, uh, I gotta say these are amazing. I'm really happy. Oh, I gotta copy up the info. Seven lemon. Yellow. And interesting enough, they put the, like it's written, pigment PY3 mono azo yellow, which I think is a really nice touch to have the full name of the thing, not just like the pigment number. This is a good primary cryo yellow. It's relatively neutral. So yeah, like some colors are going to be opaque no matter what you do. And some colors are going to be transparent no matter what you do. Like even colors like any kind of chronacridone, magenta or red that you get in gouache is going to be transparent. Even if it's gouache, because the pigment itself is transparent. So you cannot do any better than that. Unless you put a bunch of filler in there, but that's going to affect the quality of the paint or the color. If you want it more opaque, you can add a bit of white gouache, but that's going to also change the color. Chromium yellow hue. Oh, it's a Hansa yellow. Nice. PY74. Mm. 
yeah i think i will be the first <laughs> youtuber to try these i'm not even sure they're out yet it kind of blows my mind i will be doing like a a proper review video but unless i grab the footage from this live stream i will not be wristwatching all of these but i i am super excited to try these in painting because i mean they are awesome really no problem so far Okay, so this one, not touching it. Next one is a real in hue. I am so excited that good quality, affordable paints are like more easy to find and more and more easy to find because, um, yeah, like with companies like Renaissance who produce awesome quality stuff, but at the much lower price uh, it's really handy when people are like hey I want to start painting but I don't want to spend so much money on a professional set and you're like well I understand but spending money on a student set is not great but then I can say hey you can buy these and if you don't have access to these then you can buy the white knights paint so we options it's really awesome that we are having option and yeah again uh, Benzimi does alone so Otto would appreciate these <laughs> for that. <laughs> I think I might end up just putting these perhaps in two smaller palettes, like two, at least 35 colors palettes. Because it's going to be difficult to find a 70, 70 slot palette. Nope, this one. That's a really nice yellow. Like all of these are really, they have different names perhaps than what you're used to, but these pigments are really good pigments. Then we have transparent yellow. Oh yay, that's PY 150, Nicole as Azon Nickel Complex. I love this color. I've seen the Robax palette. The thing is, is that you need a, like a big desk space and they are not super easy to store, as far as I can tell. Yes, 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 that's a good yellow. I can tell right away because the, the paint is darker and I know this is a transparent color. So when you have transparent color, the darker the paint is, the more intense the color will be. And we love intense colors, don't we? Well, so far, intense. The, the brand has, a, has the appropriate name. Okay, next, next, next. Another super exciting one. The kind of quinacridone gold lookalike. Transparent gold ochre, which is which is PY150 and PR101. So this yellow and a red pigment. Yeah, it's a really good azo. It's it's nice and acidy. Oh, these are so nice and new and like <laughs> not not separated and not like all dried down. Mm. 
Hmm. I think it's going to be a bit redder perhaps than what we're used to, which is interesting. Yeah, it's a more muted kind of um, kind of quinacridone color perhaps. Well, quinacridone gold, of course. I mean. They actually tested them in tubes for two years to make sure they didn't separate. Um, I want to say, yay, finally! <laughs> oh, that's excellent news. Uh, I need to renew my stash of toothpicks because, yeah, when you have kind of a lot of paints, they are, sorry, bound to separate at some point. Okay. The next six. And I gotta remove this from the wheels of my chair and drink a bit. Um, April, I really appreciate that you're able to be here today because you can answer so many of our questions regarding these awesome paints. Jacqueline says that the range has 70 colors divided into three price groups. Three price groups, sorry. Group 1, 48 colors, 2, 10 colors, and 3, 12 colors. Which is pretty awesome. That means that most of the range is super affordable. Hi Val! If you want to make pans from them, they will slowly dry up. Um, well, I think they will behave like most other pans. That's something that I will probably address when I do my um, more in-depth review of the paints. For now, it's really more about just like the first impression of the range and testing out the colors straight from the tube. Cadmium yellow deep and uh, oops. Yeah, that's PY thirty five. That's the usual um, pigment for this color. Question: Do you have sense yet of how they compare to the pan paints? Um, not yet. I think that's perhaps going to be more. Um, noticeable when I try these uh, because I will eventually try these from a dry paint nugget I want to say so um, as far as the intensity of the color so far seems really consistent with the pans I think having the tubes is great if you prefer to work for larger pieces and also if you want to use larger brush you can put these into a palette and really work <clears throat> sorry more efficiently i apologize for all the throat clearing stuff question how do they smell oh we gotta test that out absolutely nothing nothing at all yep i'm picking up zero smell from these so far Cadmium orange. I'm pretty impressed. Okay, cadmium colors will be the group three because cadmium pigments are more expensive, but the fact that their range doesn't go up to like uh, series seven and like series seven is $20 a tube and you're like, no, why? This is pretty great news.
That's a nice color. Look at that. I feel it, I feel a tiny bit like a teeny tiny bit like Steve Irwin when I look at paints because all the paints are awesome and all the paints are amazing and I love all the paints and they are all the best thing. He was a great guy. We miss him. Well, as far as I don't know him, but as far as like persona and charisma on TV. <laughs> I, I try to remember to always have a word about smelling the paints in my videos because uh, yeah, through uh, you awesome people on YouTube, I've really become more aware that paints with smell can be a real problem for many people and no one ever mentions that up and like not even on YouTube, like it's always kind of a surprise. So that's PY83, diarylide, diarylide yellow, yeah. Yeah, he was a fun guy, Steve Irwin. But I gotta say, he, he truly went out the way he lived. Like, I would have much preferred to keep him, but that was really in character. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, pretty. Seems to be fairly transparent, but I wonder if it's super... Wow, oh, that's gotta be a staining color. No way that's not a staining color. What? Okay, it has a very good light fastness. So, yeah, it's a bit less light fast. But... If you really want to stick to super light fast color, I'm perhaps not the person you should be talking to, to, to about this because I don't really care, to be honest. Like, I, I, I try to be aware of these things, but it will never stop me from using a color if I want to. I would prefer to add the notice like, warning, this painting will eventually change color if you put it on your wall and price it accordingly, then not use the color I want to use. Yeah, their daughter is like pretty awesome now and she's doing kind of similar work with animals. Chromium orange hue. I agree that not everyone will pick up the same smell, but um, I think I have a fairly decent sense of smell. Like it's more developed than my other senses because my, my hearing is crap, my sight is crap. But I can taste and smell things more. So, um, of course, there's always there's always the case that you might react to something in there that I don't pick up because I don't react to it. But in terms of, like, if something has a smell, I usually can pick it up. That's the one sense that I have that is not completely like useless <laughs> I can sniff my way yeah well I often pick up smells that that mystery is like huh what what no I don't smell anything and I'm like eh, that's, that's there is something weird going on and same with taste like you know a thing that always makes me laugh when you look at shows like uh, the cooking shows with Gordon Ramsay's uh, Gordon Ramsay there's always this part where he has the cook like blind taste things and try to say what they are. And inevitably they, they almost all get it wrong, which is insane. I mean, they're professional professional chefs. They should know <laughs> what like if you put a piece of turkey in their mouth, they should know that it's turkey. And I'm always sort of baffled that they can't pick up the tastes of things. So I think that maybe I'm a bit more aware of 
the tastes in things. But then again, that's not something you can test really. <laughs> oh, so April says that uh, she's pretty sensitive to the smell, to smells too, and haven't noticed anything. So yeah, basically, take another sniff. You know, some paints like Sennelier, you smell them, and you're like, it doesn't smell like a chemical, or it doesn't smell strongly, but it still smells of like honey, which is to be expected. There's honey in there, but these, I mean, even if they are. Um, honey based they don't even have the the smell of honey in it cadmium red pale p o 108 What do M. Graham paints? It really depends on the paint. Like, depending on the colors, they have different smell. I think that Terra Rosa was one I really noticed because it smelled like, like uh, a shovel full of dirt. I can do a quick smell check if you want. Because it's just over here. It's not super inconvenient for me to smell these. Hold on. This they have like my sepia one really stinks. Oh, the sepia one stinks. It's awful. And some have a smell that would be perhaps. I feel like it would smell a bit like the kind of smell you have when you go near the sea, like not exactly fishy, not exactly salty, but kind of the mix of the two. But see, the M-gram ones have a smell to them. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it's not a super fun smell, I would say. Like, it doesn't smell when I, I use the paints, but when I put my nose in it, uh, yeah, <laughs> the smell. <coughs> I should keep like a, a tiny bag of coffee beans just to clear out my nose. I put my finger into M. Graham paints, so, of course. Alright, so, April, you were saying that you're confused about that color. Which one? P0108. Uh, that's probably PR108, truly, because PR108 is the usual cadmium color. That's probably just a typo. One that always have a bunch of typos is um, Windsor & Newton. It's just insane the amount of typos they have in their pigment names. Like the, the Y's and the V get often mixed up. And yeah, it's just like, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> oh, uh, have fun burning, <laughs> Valerie. Yeah, uh, hmm. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one specifically smell in the sense that my my they're all in the same palettes for me, but I remember the sepia one and the terra rosa one as having a stronger smell than the others. The sepia one is really stinky. Okay, and then Scarlet Red. Someone is yelling outside. Bye, Patricia. Bye, Val. Or is Patricia leaving? Oh no, okay, just, just Val is leaving, I think. And Hercule Poirot, bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> To get back to my stick. Scarlet. 
scarlet to red. For some reason, I really like the word scarlet. So it's PR254, Diketo Pirolo Pirol. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, bye, Victor. Thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, quick notes to my lovely patrons that are possibly in the chat. I got the prints and I will be mailing them out quite soon. So you will be getting your three prints in the mail very soon. I apologize about the delay. Summer is a pain in the ass. And yes, it was worth it to say a bad word on camera just because I really dislike summer. I dislike it that much. And this color is just incredibly nice and vibrant. Oh, I love it. I love that it starts kind of warm-ish, but then when you dilute it, it gets a bit more pinkish. Yeah, it's possible that the R254 is usually pure red. Right, so first, she first, she first sheet is painted. I will be right back because I will be changing the water. Mind you, I will, I will use the other... I can stay. I want to paint more. Paint. Paint is awesome. Okay, so a bit of erasing again. If you are um, affected by a wobbly camera, just look away for a minute because I really need to get these off before I paint over them. Right, I am done erasing. No, oh, that's what fell earlier. Okay, next. Six colors. We are moving on to the reds and magentas. Oh no! Otto, I'm so sorry you're not feeling well. Oh, I hope you feel better soon. I really hope you feel better soon. Just to make sure that there is still someone you can put in the links. And since we're talking about the Renaissance paints, um, I've made April a mod so she can share her links to the paints. Go rest up, Otto. We want you back nice and healthy. These paints are the brand new and not even available yet, I think. Um, intense water paints by Renaissance. They are classic watercolor. Renaissance had uh, already pans available, but 
they decided they wanted to offer tubes as well. See, this one has P, PR108, so that one has the proper code for it. I think the other one was just a typo. Did I already... crud? Six, six? Yeah, okay, that's the new one. Nice. I am not swatching these on cotton paper, this is cellulose paper, so if the paints look good on cellulose paper, they will look amazing on cotton paper. So cadmium red Deep. PR108. It's, an, it's another one of those pigments that has a lot of variants. I think this one is often like cadmium purple or cadmium red purple in other brands, possibly, because the cadmium reds they go into this nice like burgundy-ish color that is super lovely. I got nothing really against the cadmium paints, I know they're a bit more opaque than your usual pigments, but the thing is I haven't painted with them a lot because they tend to be a lot more expensive. And I try to go for the um, like <laughs> more affordable paints usually. Also, there's a bit of a like uh, cadmium is one of those pigments with toxicity attached to it. So if that's something that you're perhaps more sensitive to, something to pay attention. Permanent Carmine. Huh. So that's PR forty eight column four. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's not one I've seen often. really super transparent yeah yeah that that's the thing I mean April is seeing that she asked about the toxicity levels and that they said that you would have to eat a lot of tubes to get sick from it and yeah that's that's basically the the, the, I want to say the, that's the appropriate stance in regards to toxicity in paints. Um, I, I can understand that some people get really intense about it, but there's really no real issue here. Like, unless you have sensibilities on, yes, you have allergies, unless you eat like a lot of tubes, like a, a lot a lot of tubes, like dozens of them, then you are probably fine. The best would be to just not eat any paint, <laughs> as a general rule, but I think it's more like, I think no one wants to really eat paint, but it's more about drinking the paint water or having pets around the paints, 
and since these pets are much smaller uh, it doesn't affect them in the same way like you would need a much smaller amount of uh, substance to cause a reaction I think that's why it's like if you are really worried about that to, to stay aware of these things but if for yourself it should be fine some pets have issues in disposal as well some colors like Prussian blue are not good for the aquatic life it's poisonous to them So yeah, like we are not in any danger, but the environment and pets are perhaps a different story. The environment especially. Yes, it's Otto who printed do not eat on her paints. <laughs> well, to be frank, her paints look delicious and the wrappers make them look even more delicious. Quinacridone red. Oh, PV-19, nice. And purple magenta. And it's PR PR122. Again, that's the usual color for something like this. That's usual pigment. I think there was a bit more of an issue with um, toxicity in paints when the artists had to make their own paint. And they would handle like the pigment and and like do all this stuff by hand and often like oil you have turpentine as well that I mean with the way it smells it cannot be good for you Okay, so next six colors. So here we have manganese violet. The real deal, guys. PV16. April says that a lot of the toxicity comes from the binders in oil paint. Well, I thought the binder in oil paint was basically just oil. Aren't oil paints just pigment and oil? I mean, you have all the um, like the mediums and the like the, the solvents and all that. Those are not great. But I thought that the oil was basically just oil and pigment. Might be wrong. I'm gonna have to change this water quite soon.
since manganese violet is one with granulation and I will try to make this happen. Hi Palmyra! And then we have 26 ultramarine violet hue. I'm a bit surprised that this one is a hue. I think ultramarine, ul bleh, ultramarine violet is PV15, maybe. Usually it's a single pigment one, right? Pyroline maroon does really look like blood. It's kind of like I tend to forget and then I use, I think my favorite one perhaps so far is Winsor Newton's, oddly enough. But whenever I swatch that color, I'm always like, it, it takes me a moment uh, where I'm like, this really looks like blood. It's like uncanny. <laughs> so if you are like sensitive to images of blood, I don't think Perlin Maroon is for you. Alright, so this little palette is full. I think it's a good point to be switching out the water, so I'll be right back. <laughs> Perillion Maroon looks like a crime scene. <laughs> I keep rolling on this stupid card. Alright, 
I'm back. Next color is Mineral Violet. Can you guys still hear me fine? Did I miss it up by... PV23. So, our friendly, good old dioxin felt. It's one of my favorite colors because it is so intense. Like, at full, at full strength, it looks almost like black. And you can get a lot of range of colors from it because it is so intense. This one is not as intense as I would have thought. That's interesting. The mic I am using is kind of an inexpensive one by Boya, B-O-Y-A. Got it from Amazon for like $20, $30. Yeah, I think the pan version of Mineral Violet is darker too. Twenty-eight ultramarine blue. My favorite color! <laughs> Blue, I mean. My, my good old beef with ultramarine blue is that I find it has so... Um, such a poor tinting strength. And like the first professional grade ultramarine I was exposed to was French ultramarine by Daniel Smith and it's even worse. It has an even weaker tinting strength and it is super harder to re-wet. Basically, I got uh, acquainted with the worst first. So uh, that really gave me a bad impression of this color. Because the hue, the hue is lovely, but it's annoying. It annoys me to use it. This one seems to be quite nice though. It's not the darkest ultramarine blue I've seen. But it's definitely the right color. Prussian blue. This is one of my favorites, so I was really bummed when I found out that it's not super good for the fishies. Because... Uh, I feel especially bad when I handmade this this paint as much as I like it because when I when I paint I mean not a lot of paint ends up in the oops, this one was a tiny bit separated the Prussian blue but um, yeah when I paint like regular painting not a lot of, of the pigment ends up being in the sewer system but when I mold it by hand then a lot more paint gets like washed off at the end even if i try to wash off as little as i can i mean it's sustaining color so it really gets stuck uh, gets stuck in the in the the slab for mulling and i have to scrub at it to clean it so no matter how much i want to like keep most of the pigment out of the water system it's really hard to do Oh yeah, uh, please do not judge the vibrancy of this color, these colors from just the stream itself because my camera is really not great. But I will be posting pictures of the colors on Patreon when it's all done and dry and these will be 
a much better uh, reference. If you are hearing bells, that's perfectly fine. So that's basically phthalo blue green shade. to bring in the next six uh wait that's not six i cannot count um okay that's better So now we have tallow blue. So that's PB fifteen one colon one. Wonder if that's gonna be like the red shade. How do you think they're doing with drying color shift? It really depends on the pigment. Um, colors like the cadmium have a stronger pigment shift when they dry. Colors like uh, the quinacridone, they, they don't often change. So really, it, with these paints, there are no bind... not, not bind, I want to say, there are no fillers. There is nothing that will... like no fillers, no brighteners, so... The pigments will react as the pigments react themselves. There will be nothing affecting them from what I can see so far. Of course, all watercolors, they tend to be a bit uh, lighter when they dry. That's just the nature of the beast. It seems to be quite a... Oh, that's an interesting... I kind of want to say that this is like a more muted phthalo blue. It's it's it has a str strong tinting strength. It is really nice strong pigment, but it's not like unusable on its own. I could find use for this pigment without mixing anything in it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, PB16 colon 6 is usually red shade. So, well, this one is definitely not green, like this one. Well, yeah, you gotta keep in mind that the camera is gonna give you a distorted impression of the colors, but still, this is not like this, right? Is there kind of a neutral phthalo blue that is neither red, neither green? So this is Cobalt Blue Pale. I, for one, really like cobalt colors, even if they are, again, a bit problematic for many reasons. It goes a bit like this. Like I will perhaps think twice before buying myself a cobalt color, but I will never refrain from using the ones I have or refuse a gift because it has this in it. I love this color. Oh, 
also usually a grand lighting color, so I will try to check that out in my swatch as well. The key, if you want to have granulation with the colors, is to make a nice, really juicy swatch. If you can get away with some colors that have granulation and make them look not super granulated by painting them with very little water, but on the other side, if you want the granulation, you just gotta add more water. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> look in the chat. Chat is saying that uh, no phthalo blue can ever be neutral or muted. Well, you, you can see how this one looks a bit more like, like Prussian blue. Like, it's not... I don't mean muted in terms of... Um, sorry, being a light color. But I mean muted as in not neon color. Like a, a tiny bit less saturated than others have been, perhaps. Oops. I just looked at the time, guys, and I think this is going to be a two-parter because I'm a bit stuck for time today. So I will finish this sheet and I'm going to make another live stream soon where we swatch the rest of the colors. I am sorry. <laughs> Please don't be mad at me for that. Please. Blech. Blech. Put paint on my finger. Put your paint on my fingers. Back to work, Patricia. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope things are going well with you and the move and stuff. Take care. Beautiful. <laughs> so I think it sort of fits with everyone's schedule if I if I end this soon. <laughs> Perhaps my timing is not so bad for today. So here we have End and Throne Blue, which is an awesome color. Super dark, deep, usually warm blue, which means like with a reddish to it very light it's never going to be purple of course but it mixes stronger purple than it mixes green so it is a warm blue in that regard uh, fingertips are not so bad because i use a rag to help me open the tubes i have i have been um, to the point where I really hurt my fingertips opening and closing tubes before. So uh, I try to always, if I know I'm going to be opening and closing a lot of them, just to have a rag or something so it's less abrasive on my fingers. I have kind of a really sensitive skin. It just <laughs> we whenever we get a new um, like like scrubby for doing the dishes, if if it's brand new, I'm gonna like scorch my fingers on it. It's a bit like rug burn. You know what rug burn is like when you say you trip and you fall on the rug and it sort of burns your skin. Well, I get patches of that on my hand from using the scrub. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Christine. That's so kind. Christine is saying that they are so happy for me that Renaissance sent the paints and they're very tempted and trying not to be a little jealous. 
I still, I, I don't want to give you, give anyone false hopes, but I was thinking since they were so awesome and generous and send like these huge tubes, perhaps I will see about making a couple of swatch, like a couple of dot cards from all the tubes they sent me and we'll have a giveaway with the swatch, with the dot cards. Like nothing, I will try to make them on perhaps smaller paper so it's easier to send out. Like perhaps the B cotton paper and have all the dots. And maybe just the numbers and then include a chart, a printed chart. Because I, I, I'm a bit limited in time as well, I got many things to do. But I would really appreciate, I would really love it if I could like give back a bit of this to you guys. So I'm thinking that um, dot cards might be a nice way to go about this. Is this something you would love to receive? <clears throat> My voice is sort of giving up. Okay, this one has many pigments. Gonna have to write small. <laughs> it has four pigments. So it has Indent Throne Blue, this one. It has one of the PB19s. It's one of the quinacridone red colors. It has some phthalo blue in the green shade and it has a black pigment. So the dot card sound... Oh yeah, okay, good, the dot card. I will... I will probably send Otto the extra real in because she loves it so much and she's my friend and yeah we trade stuff all the time so but yeah I'm thinking the dot cards would be something that would be a nice way to so I will I will set these up they will probably be in the video where I review the paints like as a giveaway and um, yeah, that will give me a bit of time to uh, prepare the sheets and let them dry. The indigo color is really pretty. So um, just a quick parenthesis because of this, I have, don't have much time because there's only one color left to swatch. But I just want to quickly say, if you have some qualms about colors with having many pigments in it, just do a test where you take a color that has a lot of pigments and you take a color that looks almost exactly the same but has a single pigment and do mixes like take these two colors say there are two yellows mix them both with the same magenta mix them both with the same blue mix them both with the same green just to see if there's really a consequence to the fact that one color has many pigments because as far as i can tell the fact that this has four pigments or one pigment doesn't matter one bit because what is important in the end is the final color and I think perhaps some people are confused between having a multi-pigment paint creating a more muted color and the fact that the the perhaps they use the wrong temperature of color for their mixes like if you use the wrong temperature if you use a warm uh, yellow for a green mix it's not going to make a nice vibrant green it's going to make a muted green regardless of the number of pigments so yeah just a this is this is the kind of thing it's been bothering me for quite some time because i can't figure out the logic of why having many pigments would create unpredictable undesirable effects to me that's kind of weird so i want i want to test it out and do like mixes and all that but i haven't had the time yet but I encourage you to do so if you feel like this is something that you're either curious about or that really affects the way you use paints. Like the multi-pigment multi colors, they don't really matter. It's more like perhaps knowing a bit more about the pigments is helpful. Like if you see that a, a mix has some white color and you're struggling with issues of opacity, that might be something that will like, of course, white is going to make a color less um, vibrant than a fully transparent color. That's, that's a given, but it's not rocket science. It's not like, 
unpredictable. So yeah, it's been bothering me like wait, but that multi-pigment card is like I, I cannot see a difference. I'm like what either I'm missing something and that's really bothering me that I'm missing it, or there's really like nothing to be worried about. And I am in love with this color. It's so pretty. Ugh. Ugh. So nice. So nice. Yeah, but that's the thing. I don't even think that it depends on what the multiple pigments are. I don't think it matters. Like, if you have a yellow that is made from an orange, a yellow and a green pigment, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Because ultimately, what is going to be affecting the mix is the final mix of these colors. So if these colors create a warm yellow, uh, you got to be careful what you mix it with if you want to keep the vibrancy of the colors. Like, you don't... You cannot have a pigment hiding in the color mix. It's going to be visible. So there is no way that, that you can mix colors and end up with something that is unexpected. Like, it might not be the color you expected to create, but it will indeed be the color that this mix will always create. Because that's just the nature that, that it is. Yeah, granulation is a different issue, I agree. Lee, you have a good point. But, um, like, opacity and granulation are other factors that will affect the color mix, but um, it's not going to affect... Like, it's something that might produce an undesirable effect, but it's not something that is entirely unpredictable. Like, it's important to be aware of... Like, if you mix two colors and it doesn't give out the result you want, then you can look at the pigments and see if one is granulating, if one is opaque. Like, what's, up, what's going on? But... Technically, if you have like, like an, let's say we take a Holbein. Holbein doesn't have a lot of granulating colors. It's mostly smooth colors. But whether you take a Holbein color that has three pigments and you mix it with another one that has three pigments, it doesn't matter. The fact that you end up with a mix that has six pigments in it, it doesn't matter either. It's just, it won't like, you will not end up with surprise mud. Like, <laughs> that, that's not a thing. You might have undesirable effect like separation because of the weight of the pigment and some opacity issues, but like in terms of color mixing, uh, it's not like it, it's not gonna turn into a new color completely. I think the typical advice to avoid black, because Stephen is asking, is that the reason for a typical advice to avoid black? Um, I don't know. I know that I don't recommend using black because, in my opinion, it dulls out the color. If you want to create a dark color that has richness and depth, you're much better served by mixing your own dark color from, uh, like, say, ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. Because you're going to end up with a color that is not... Like, the, the black pigments are usually kind of flat. So if you mix white, if, if you mix black into a color, sorry, it's going to make it flat. It's not going to give it the richness and the, like, the, the color interest that you can find in the transparency of, of watercolors. Yeah, what really matters ultimately is the temperature of the colors you mix, not necessarily the pigments in it, unless you're looking at other qualities like granulation and opacity. Eh, that was kind of a long rant. <laughs> I apologize. It's just something that's been on my brain because uh, I cannot figure out the logic of it. And it's, when I cannot figure out the logic of things, it just bothers me. So this is the first sheet that we swatched. Second sheet. And I'm going to have to end this here, fortunately. But I think it's not going to be that bad because it seems like many of you have things to do and my voice is getting pretty roughed up. <laughs> it's, it's from being so broken. breaks up my voice as well. Um, I will not be swatching these without you guys. I will be waiting 
and I will be making these into uh, another live stream possibly tomorrow if not earlier next week maybe Tuesday but yeah these these are the lovely intense um, it's classic watercolor intense water by Renaissance um, if you're looking into the Renaissance product um, April has a shop on Etsy where she sells these paints and she's the only one in North America that sells them so uh, yeah and they are affordable if you are uh, outside of the north outside of North America if you are in Europe Europe this is one of the words that really messes up with my brain but anyway <laughs> if you are overseas um, if you are in Poland even better you can get these for really really affordable prices so I recommend looking out for these um, are there any like uh, uh, final questions before I close this yeah Lee is saying that you could probably mix all your phthalos together to make a turquoise color and it would behave just like any other phthalo but if you have a bunch of different properties that can that can add challenge yeah that's that's basically it <laughs> yeah there's gonna be a part two where we test out basically the other half of the colors so we have greens and a bit of teal colors uh, lovely warm browns reddish browns darker browns so that's what is waiting for us in the next one thank you so so much everyone for being there and yeah we will be back to this quite soon because I'm really excited to test out the other colors and I think you're quite excited to see them as well so let's all be excited about paints that's the best <laughs> thank you so much from everyone for watching thank you so much um, Oro for moderating and also April and Ian thanks thank you so much April for answering all the questions regarding the paints in the chat that's pretty great and um, I hope you all have a super great weekend and we will see each other very soon bye bye